Welcome back to the next stage of my character kit bashing tutorial series. When we last left off, we just finished kit bashing this character. Now it's time to bring him to life. This stage will be split up into a series of videos, each covering a different topic. These will include simplifying the armature, Daz Studio, Diffeomorphic, posing, and expressions. The first thing we're going to do is go over to the collection which houses the main armature and rename that to Main Character. Then create another collection inside it and call that Main Character Parts. Open up the main armature, select all the objects inside it, and then place them all into the Main Character Parts folder. Click the Disable Selection button on the collection. This will make the character's mesh unselectable, making it easier to select the armature. Now, the main problem with this armature is that it has too many bones. And the majority of these bones we don't even need, as they're for making the fabric react to in-game physics. So we need to remove these, but we don't want to delete them, as they could cause issues with the weight paint. The first thing you need to do is go down to the waist area. Select this bone in the center, not the bone on top, but the one underneath. This is the anchor bone. You'll be able to tell, as you will see these dotted lines coming out in a cross shape. The anchor bone is like the center of gravity of the character, and it's where all the corresponding bone connections meet. In fact, if you zoom out and rotate this bone, you'll see that the entire character moves with it. So what I need you to do is follow these dotted lines, which will lead to joint bones, and select them. Let's start with the legs. So select the hip bones. Remember, the joint bones are underneath the physics bones. Follow the dotted lines down and select the knee bones. Then select the ankle bones and the toe bones. Go back up and select the waist bone. Follow the dotted line up through the torso's bone chain until you reach the shoulder bones. Select the neck bones, then select both the shoulder and the elbow bones. Select both wrist bones, and then select all the bones in the hand. Now, once all the joints are selected, go to Armature Data. You will see a menu called Bone Collections. Within that, you'll see a layer. Click on that layer and delete it. Now click on the plus button. Call it Joint Bones, and then click Assign. If you unselect all the bones, then go over and press the Select button, all the joint bones will be automatically selected. Go up to the Select drop-down menu and press Invert. Now all our physics bones have been selected. Go over and create another layer. Call that Hidden Bones. And then assign those bones. Now click on the Visibility icon to hide the fabric bones. Do a stress test to make sure that we haven't missed any joints. On the hands, you can see that this wrist bone is actually a fabric bone. To remove it, select it, go over to the joint layer and select Remove. Then, click on the hidden bones layer and click Assign. Do the same for the other side. Continue stress testing, then hide the joint bones and check the hidden bones for any missed joints. This belt bone will come in handy later on when we start posing, but it's currently warping the accessories on the torso. Unhide the joint bones. You will see that it sits on top of the anchor bone. To fix the warping, we just need to do some basic weight painting. So first, with this bone selected, go to Edit Mode. Pull the belt bone up slightly, then go back to Pose Mode. Go to Layers and click Remove on the Hidden Bone layer, then select the Joint Bones and press Assign. Now we need to fix this weight paint issue. Go to Object Mode and select the armature, and click on this bag which is being warped. Go to Weight Paint Mode. Now double click on the belt bone. Make sure your weight value is set to zero. Press Ctrl X to fill the object. Go back to object mode, select the armature, then select the body armor. Then go back to weight paint mode. Select the belt bone again, 
then press Ctrl X. That will fix our weight paint issue. Go back to object mode, select the armature, and go to pose mode. Check for any more weight paint issues. Clear the transforms to reset. Now that all our joints are organized, the next thing we need to do is color code our bones. This will make posing more easier, as we'll be able to see the bones more clearly and identify points of interest. In pose mode, go over to the data menu and press select. Go over to the bone menu and click on the viewport display. You will see two menus labeled default colors. Click on Pose Bone Color. You will see a list of colors. Feel free to use whatever color you want. For me personally, I'm going to use orange. Then click on the button to the right. That will copy the color to all the bones you have selected on your skeleton. I recommend giving the hands two unique colors, because if you use a pose which involves overlapping the hands, it will be very difficult to see which bone belongs to which hand. Shift select the wrist, then shift select the entire hand. Then go to the pose bone color and select blue, then copy to selected. On the right hand, set those bones to use the color green. Now it will be much easier to tell which hand is which. Select the belt bone and make that purple so it won't be confused with the anchor bone. Now, the last thing we're going to do is make the bones bigger as they're quite small and difficult to select. Go to Edit Mode, then go to Transforms Pivot Point. Set that to Individual Origin. Then set Global to Local. Select all the joint bones and then go to the Scale tool. Drag the scale up to make all the joint bones bigger. You will notice that the hands have gotten a bit too big. You can just box select them, and while holding shift, scale them down. Go back to pose mode. You can now see that we have a much less cluttered and much more visible armature. Now, that concludes simplifying this rig, but this series will be about posing. So let's get some things set up for later on down the line. First of all, we need to give this character a weapon, since he's supposed to be a Soviet nuclear survivor, but he's unarmed. Luckily for you, I created two videos on how to rig and kitbash an AKS-74U, so we're going to be using this when we pose our character. I personally will be using this version, equipped with the 545 magazine and the PBS-4 silencer. Go to X-ray mode, select all the visible objects, then right-click and copy. Back in your character blend file, create a new folder and call it AKS-74U. Now go back to object mode, right-click and paste object. It will come in quite big. Before we scale it, click on the AK's collection, then create a subfolder. Open the AK's armature, select all the parented objects and move them over to the new collection. Rename that folder to Parts. Click Disable Selection on the Parts folder. Now only the armature can be selected. Scale the AK down slightly so that it's easier to manage. Move it over to the character and make it smaller. Go to a top down view and rotate it 90 degrees. Position it next to the character's chest. This will give us a good idea of the scale of the AK in proportion to the character. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Currently, it doesn't need to be a completely accurate scale, just an approximation. Later on, when we start posing this character, we can adjust the scale to meet our needs. For now, I'm just going to leave it here at this scale. Now in preparation for this next video, which will cover Daz, we're going to set up this AK so it can be imported into Daz as a prop. Turn off Disable Selection for the AK's parts. Then right click on the AK's main collection and select Objects. Go to File, Export, OBJ, then export it into your Kitbash project as Daz AKS. And that concludes this video on simplifying the character's armature. The next stage of this series will come in two parts. The first will be a standalone video which will show you how to install and set up Daz Studio. 
The second will show you how to pose a character within Daz, which will be much easier and much more realistic than doing so in Blender. After which, we will then import that Daz model into our Blender scene so we can reference from it when posing our kitbashed character.